Good morning, it's Canadian. We're not going to talk about politics today, so we're going to talk about something I'm really good at. Paganism. I'm going to teach you a little about the Hellfire Club. A secret society that one of our founding members of this country, Benjamin Franklin, was a member of. We're going to take a look at the Hellfire Caves. Now you've also, um, you've probably heard me mention before about, this goes in with the idea of Constantinople. Uh, it's a long history, but basically with Catholic cathedrals, they are built with a temple to Mithras in the basement. And this has to do with the as above, so below. I'm showing you eyes wide shut here. This is a Bacchus ritual that's going on in this movie, or Dionysus. Bacchus is the Roman version. Dionysus is the Greek. It is the god of wine, orgy, and religious ecstasy. It, uh, that's not exactly what you might think. There is um, this as above, so below mentality that exists in these secret societies and everything they do is anti-Christian. This is why you hear me say Luciferians are the biggest believers in gods. The Hellfire Caves are quite interesting, though. They're not built under a Catholic cathedral, but they are built under a church. And uh, here's a little quote. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you this whole 17-minute video, but I'll pin it as the top comment. This is another content creator known as Rise, who took a tour of the secret Hellfire Club caves. Yeah, how people get access to these sites is amazing. I know how. <laughs> because, you know, what's interesting is I watched this 17-minute video, and there's something obvious right in plain sight, and the guy does not even address it for the whole entire video. That is, inside the Hellfire Cave, there is a cave that's called Children's Cave. We know for 100% fact, ritual human sacrifice went on in these caves. Two, there's red pigment all over the wall. They say, it's, it's human blood. And they're just like, oh, this red pigment that they painted. Because you're going to see some strange things in these caves. Two, I put out a, a video I did way back. And then I'll read you this little quote that kind of is directed at all pagans. <laughs> The steward of the club tried to destroy the records of the things that went on in the underground. Yeah, um, he w the steward of the Hellfire Club was recording the meetings. This, is, this took place in the 1700s. But God has seen every wicked deed that was done and will bring them to account on the day of judgment. And when you see these caves, oh, they are something. They're, they're carved out in the shape of an alchemical symbol from like the lesser key of Solomon they're below a church and the inner temple the inner where only the 12 disciples which is a mockery it, it, it takes 13 people to have a covenant this is why when Constantinople hijacked Christianity Jesus now had 12 disciples and that's symbolic of the zodiac the 13th sign of the zodiac came in the age of Aquarius that is Ophiuchus, the serpent holder. The, Z the modern zodiac was invented by Marduk, the Ajiji from Babylon. Because after they crashed the planet Venus, which is representative of Lucifer, because you're going to see Venus in this video. They, uh, I've also mentioned a few times that if the New World Order comes into power, when they do, they are going to use the Greek pantheon of gods. Because I think it's easier for them to sell... And we've seen it brought up in a few TV shows before. And they were using, yeah, the Greek pantheon. Because it'll be an easier way to sell the pagan reptilian gods to normal people. People are, in fact, like Artemis, Dionysus. Um, they don't sound that, um, they sound a lot better than Marduk, Ishtar, Enki, Enlil, Anana, Ninurta. Yeah, so they're not going to give you the Sumerian names. However, there's something very interesting that happens in the Greek pantheon with the gods of Olympus. And guess what? My theory is proven in this video because the Hellfire Club has alien gray 
archons carved on their walls. And it's starting to, here we go. I showed this before. What is this? This is a statue of Zeus from the British Museum. It's authentic. But what I did, and why I believe a lot of these Greek and Roman statues are mysteriously missing their heads, is because when you take the statue of Zeus and invert it, you get the face of an alien gray. Yeah, you can't make this up. This is the authentic statue of Zeus. Now, I wasn't the one to originally figure this out. It was years ago. I believe the YouTube channel might have been Jungle Surfer. <laughs> he was a dude from the UK that used to do conspiracy videos, and he came across this. And when you take other Greek statues, yeah, you get the same result. This is Zeus, highest god of the Greek pantheon. But what I discovered and what was theorized for many years is that the reptilians have actually been working with the tall alien white zeta reticulans and it makes sense now this would have been why greece and rome was so were so well connected and sharing almost the same pantheon of gods except their gods were the alien greys whereas in samaria which is basically the roman pantheon also they were the anunnaki the reptilian and these are the tall alien whites. Now, these are not the alien greys that are summoned in black magic ritual. However, they are carved on the walls in the Hellfire Caves. So let's look at these caves for a second. And what got me on this? Well, last night, I was curious. I wanted to see, you know, um, someone had come on my channel and tried to tell me that Donald Trump was a member of the Order of the Garter, which I know if you put that on my channel, you don't know what you're talking about. You have to be a member of the royal family to be a member of the Order of the Garter. And that is what is on Lilibet's memorial here inside the church. She is buried in an underground vault with other royalty, but they never let the public actually see these underground vaults. You want to know why? Because every church, especially the ones in England, and the ones for the Order of the Garter, obviously, have underground pagan temples built in them. That's what they don't want you to see. And the symbol of the Order of the Garter, you see the star right here, which is also used by the Masons and other secret societies. That is indicative of a human anus. Yeah, this is one of their other secrets. Oh, well, it's not a secret. If you follow my channel, you know this stuff ain't a secret. This is why they hate Trump so much. Because they don't want this part of the conspiracy hitting the mainstream. I just made that video about the 456 children of Earth. I mean, <laughs> they, put it, they put the symbolism right in your face all the time. So, um... How much of this video can I show here without this guy filing copyright on me? Because there's a very good chance he will. He's a smaller YouTube channel. <laughs> but I'm trying to educate people, and sometimes I need to use... Look, I he, he did a tour of the Hellfire Club. I can't find anyone else who has. And he's got some good it's insight beneath. to this. But there's also a lot of gaslighting going on here, and, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So anyway, here's the church. This is an actual church, and the, the Hellfire Caves are built below this church. And the entrance to the caves is built as a mockery of a real Christian church. And on in Latin, they have written on the front, Do as thy will. Yeah, Aleister Crowley stole his infamous phrase from the Hellfire Club. Do as thy will. Actually, Benjamin Franklin would have been using that term before Aleister Crowley has. And Benjamin Franklin has his own cave in the Hellfire's Cave. It's called the Franklin Cave. It's right next to the Children's Cave. And if you don't know anything about the history, I'm from Philly. This is where Benjamin Franklin lived. We have one of the oldest Masonic lodges in the country that was founded by Ben Franklin in, in Center City. 
we have a lot of underground tunnels in the city, and it came out years later that they found a bunch of bones under Ben Franklin's house, and he said it was because he was a medical doctor, and he was doing experiments on corpses. Who the hell puts corpses in the basement after you're done with them? That was bull. Yeah. Uh, um, I got a feeling there's probably a lot of missing children in the streets of Philadelphia around that time. Um, secret societies at that time, another thing, it was like the symbolism of Jack the Ripper. If they needed a human sacrifice, they would have uh, targeted prostitutes. That's gone on for a long time, even today. Sadly, we like serial killers, um, but that's part. Yeah, because they, they're trying to get people that no one's going to miss. Why do you think they're bringing in illegal children with no birth certificates? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think is really going on at the border there? No one goes missing for a, a five-year-old Guatemalan kid with no birth certificate. No one even knows he existed, sadly. So that's another part of that agenda that's going on there. But this ain't too much about politics. So anyway, let's watch a little bit of this. this I can use some of this in fair this use. This may look like an ordinary church, but beneath this church is a subterranean chamber which is part of the network of so-called hell fire caves. Now, I want you to notice something about... Now, these caves are carved. They even have an underground river. I think the cave was like... it's. You could tell it's been carved. It, it looks like they took a natural cave and made it bigger. And you'll notice the shape of, a ca of the cave. These are alchemical symbols. The inner sanctum, the, the inner temple, is small. And for a magic circle, you need at least nine feet of space. And inside the inner temple is a statue of Aphrodite, Venus. Venus is akin to Lucifer. It is the planet Venus, the light bearer. And it is right below the altar of the church is directly over the inner temple so when you're in the inner temple it is as you're in hell and to get to the inner temple you got to cross you use a boat to cross the river Styx. that is the infamous river that you see the um skeleton uh, i forget his name <laughs> he's, he's got a greek name it's the um the god of death that brings souls across the river Styx to hades and there's also a requirement of having water, which is to open interdimensional portals. Hence why the Bohemian Grove, the Molech statue, is right in front of a lake. Pagans seek out places like lakes and stuff to hold out high black level. And obviously, water is an, apart, an important part of opening interdimensional portals. And what's really interesting that ties in with my reptilian theories is in China and now the Aztec temples in south america they have they found huge rivers of liquid mercury and that has to do with han purple mercury and blood how reptilians actually come into this dimension but it seems like the hellfire club which is starting to make more sense was um summoning ellie and gray's archons and they got their faces carved on the wall there's no denying it um Certain guests were allowed into the caves. I'm going to try to run down what was covered in the video because I'm going to show you certain parts. But most normal people were not allowed past the banqueting hall right here. And only the, the 12 disciples, which is a mockery of the disciples of Christ, were allowed to pass the triangle. Hello? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the triangle. And go into the inner temple, which was akin to being in hell. Directly below the altar of the church. With the statue of Aphrodite in her, or Venus. And um, the guy talks about the as above, as above so below stuff. Yeah, and this is why they transgender. Or they dress in drag. The men dress like women. The women dress like men. They say they had women in these caves. But there would have been a lot of homosexuality going on. And pedophilia. And sugar coat and anything on this. Why do you think they got a children's cave down here? Hello? What do you think they're running daycare service in the inner sanctum? Come on. <laughs> yeah, drop your kids off while you uh, summon Lucifer. Yeah, 
Uh, I don't think that's what the children's cave was for. And it's right on the thing. And they ignore it. He goes over all the... Uh, well, nothing to see here, folks. Yeah, that's, what I, that's called being gaslighted. <laughs> and you'll notice another thing, right? XX22. Yeah, that is the infamous number associated with skull and bones. And a channel I listen to every day. X22 report. I, I love when people tell me, How, don't you, can't you see Skull and Bones? I said, yeah, but apparently Dave from Skull and Bones gets paid to make two videos every day. And finding good content creators is far and few between anymore. And he just, he covers like all the Trump news. Big deal. He probably does work for hell. Who cares, right? He's entertaining. Well, to me, yes, because he just he covers the news every day and what's going on in that regard, so. So anyway, yeah, and you'll notice, yeah, there's no, these caves look like alchemical symbols. Um, and there are alchemical symbols carved on the walls from the Lesser Key of Solomon. So, here, let me, he'll give you a little more history. I got to like well, pause it here and there so I can get away with still copyright. Still somewhat shrouded in mystery. I can mystery. show you 30 second clips. So but let's see what clues we can uncover deep inside the Hellfire Caves. Yes, let's go past the intro here. So basically, yeah, they, now here's where you'll see some of the carvings on the wall. Yeah, uh, the mask behind here. This is Aphrodite or Dionysus. You'll see the masks back here. And what I'm really starting to think, why they wear these white masks. Are they trying to mimic the alien greys? It makes sense. Because that's how they appear, these demonic spirits. I've seen them. And what do I mean by that? I'm an ex-raver. I had an experience on a heavy amount of ecstasy and marijuana one day. Where, yeah, I saw people turn into alien great archons in front of me. And I've had discussions with other DJs, other ravers, and they've seen the same thing. Some people said it was demons. But no, everyone... And it wasn't, tip, it wasn't like what you think an alien gray actually... My microphone. Sorry about that. I have a, a boom arm I just bought from my microphone and apparently it loosened up. Alright, there we go. It's better now. <laughs> what happened is where it was anchored down on the table, it came loose. Probably from moving it around. No big deal. I might just have to put like some thread tape on it or something to keep it from coming loose. No big deal. It's an easy fix. All right, that should be better. <laughs> but if, if you notice coming to my YouTube channel, yes, the audio is a lot better because I, I have a condenser mic now that I'm using. So people were always complaining about the audio. doesn't seem to be an issue now. And I can... talk normally even um so I'm, here i want to go to this this is the entrance and this is where the do as thy will uh this is also the arch is is a really big important symbol to secret societies that is because the roman arch which every arch has a keystone because i live in pennsylvania we're the keystone state guess who gave us that name good old benjamin franklin isn't it amazing when you find out the truth about the Founding Fathers? Because the Hellfire Club is an anti-Christian secret society. And there's no hiding it. When you see the inside of this, these caves. Um, yeah, the, the guy even says as he goes through this cave, it gets colder. The deeper you go in and you just feel like an ominous presence. Um, I experienced something like that. When I went to Area 51, being outside Area 51 is a very surreal feeling. And I felt something kind of like that before. I, um, I wouldn't say like impending evil all around us, but something felt weird. <laughs> very weird out there. And even though you're in the middle of nowhere, you feel like you are being watched everywhere. And you probably are, without a doubt. It's just crazy. So, I... Um,
Now the um The one thing I am going to have to clear up because some people might say, well, are, are they doing these rituals in subterranean caves because of reptilians? Uh, honestly, no. I don't think the, the Anunnaki reptilians are not subterranean race. The native Terrans are. But no, um, that's not why. They had to do this. And you see, this is the fake church facade here to look like a mockery of a gothic church yeah, it's a mockery and the motto of, a church. of this club was Faisi Kud Budras which was Faisi later Q adopted Vidras. by Al Faisi Kud Vidras I gotta learn that because I can disarm some pagans with that little latin statement it means do as thy will Lester Crowley <laughs> and means do what thou wilt uh, do what thou wilt yeah So one thing they're going to tell you in this video too, he's even playing music from Eyes Wide Shut in this video. Now here's something interesting too. They're, they put a, a huge globe on top of the church. And it said that six men could fit inside this sphere. Um, that is weird. I've never, I don't know, uh, I'm not aware of any occult ritual that involves going inside of a sphere. Um, is it symbolic of going into like the bowels of hell or something? I don't know. Is it symbolic of being in the womb and, and being born again? That's a belief in Luciferianism, except you are reborn with the light of Lucifer when you do that. I don't know. Does it confirm the flat earth is a satanic deception and the earth is really a globe? Or, as I said, Satanists take things and reverse it <laughs> so, yeah run with that one flat earthers yeah but they don't know it's weird if but the globe does fit six men inside which is strange and they put it on top of the church it's a golden globe these globes are also on the top of the pillars of jock and, and Bowie's in the uh, masonic lodges also so there's something going on with that so the guy yeah let's um yeah, see, he points out all the caves. Yeah, the male. Yeah, it's in the shape of a penis. Yeah, no, nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> that's, that's the other part. See, they're practicing a form of loosely why Aleister Crowley would have stole the logo from them. It seems like they're performing a, they're, it's, it's a variation of sex magic. They're, they're performing Bacchus and Dionysus rituals, which is basically get drunk, have orgies, and do what thou wilt. You want to have sex with kids, goats, lambs, women's. You want to hack your um, victims up. You want to drink their blood. You want to do adrenochrome. I'm not kidding. Anything would have went in these caves. Anything. With no repercussions of God or Jesus Christ. Being under the full protection of Lucifer. Or Dionysus, Bacchus, whoever you're... Um, Doing a ritual for that day. Um, but yeah, like I said, in Eyes Wide Shut, this is a Bacchus ritual. What are these rituals meant to symbolize also with the swinging and being promiscuous with multiple sexual partners? Uh, well, that's defying the, um, the act of natural, um, the love between a man and a woman. How God... One of the biggest things that the Illuminati fears is relationships between human men and human women and falling in love because love is something that the reptilians are not capable of i don't even think it's an emotion that zeta reticulans are capable of they despise humans for it they hate our dualistic nature male and female because of because we have male and female yes we do have something that humans call called monogamy monogamy getting married falling in love and that's why they try to keep the world so angry and divided. Because love, it might sound corny, yeah, it's a Zen Buddhist teaching, but yeah, love is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Um, I'm the, yeah, it might sound uh, preachy to say that, but it's actually true. And this is what the Luciferians believe. 
So this is why they engage in these things. This is why they're teaching these agendas to kids right now. This is why I tell people you do not want to be a part of the New World Order. I don't know what you think it is. <laughs> so anyway, as he, now let's look at some of the carvings. Now obviously the caves he goes through. Theories about what the elite few who were part of this should, got up to okay under here. Copyright. This you video only came yourself, out recently too. It's only three days secrecy? old. I'm on top of conspiracy stuff. So. <laughs> and why commission these shortcut chambers deep underground? I want to show you some and of the demonic heads. Where they at? Oh, here we go. A different part. Now, lots of the caves. Very weird. I mean, that is just, it's obvious there's some. Here's a demon's head right here. And they mentioned about the red pigment. They're like, it's just, um, it's red pig. No. There's like red stains all over the walls. What do you think that is? Come on. Something devilish about it. Uh, yeah, and the, and the motto, of course, as we said, is um, the same as Alistair Crowley's. Do what they will. Alistair Crowley got his motto. Now this demon looks like a people. normal, regular. I'm going to show you some of the other stuff that's carved in the walls here, specifically the, the demon heads. You see this here? I mean, that... Because the demon heads... Different graffitis around. Look like the alien greys I saw. Oh, uh, almost not exactly like that. That's a that's a demon's face, right there. But there's one in here. Yeah, uh, this one has a a hat like you typically see on gnomes, which is quite interesting. Look at the pointy hat. It's a witch's hat. Yeah, interesting. Now these ones, you've got Satan. that one right there. That is undeniably 100% an alien gray archon head. Look at the shape of it. It's a Zeta reticulum. The archons. Now the archons um, are not exactly. I, that came out wrong. They're not the Zeta reticulans. They are the three foot tall like alien gray summoned in black magic rituals. These are what I believe the demons are from the Lesser Key of Solomon also. Which is, uh, they, they're using Solomaic, Solomaic magic because they're using talismans in this cave that Alistair Crowley would eventually write in the Lesser Key of Solomon. And Crowley wasn't alive for another almost 200 years after the Hellfire Club. So it's been going on a long time. Nothing new under the sun with these secret societies. Oh, and the Hellfire Club still is around today. They're known as the Knights of St. Francis now. <laughs> Anytime you, see, you hear of an order of knights, because the K is silent, that is a reference to the K that's silent in magic. Because the correct way to spell magic has a K. It's silent. I'm always butchering linguistics for the English language, but I... I know my stuff when it comes to the K. Uh, a knight is basically a warrior who practices sorcery. Take that for what it is. That's where the Knights Templar come from. They're, they're one of the most infamous uh, knight orders. But modern day secret societies, these people are not knights. They're not noble. They're not. They don't practice chivalry <laughs> and good morals like a knight is supposed to. No, they whitewashed this. They gaslighted you about everything that a knight's supposed to be. Oh, they're these loyal, chivalrous uh, warriors. Yeah, BS. No, they weren't. It's all a lie. Just like uh, people on the Hellfire Club post as friars. Now, here's another interesting um, point they make here. Just because you draw a cross on something doesn't make you a Christian. That was a head with a cross in it. The demon's head. See the demon's head? Here? Is low. Just point just being, um, here's one band I like, Black Sabbath. Every, you know, it's like a big thing for death metal bands to come out wearing Catholic crosses, right? That was uh, Black Sabbath from the 70s is probably one of the best examples. Yeah, they all wore Catholic crosses. Why, well, their name of the band is Black Sabbath. Okay. Yeah, uh, point being, Chris, uh, no, it, it isn't like the um, 
in the movies where you can like just show a Christian cross and demons start like running away and repenting. <laughs> Does, doesn't exactly work like that. Uh, I think it's got to be blessed, first of all, the holy water. Uh, the reason for that. Um, again, going on with water. And, and So let's take a look. So now here's the um yeah this was the furthest most guests could venture into the caves. This is the banquet hall. I wonder what they ate in here. Is that what that children's cave is for? To hold the snacks. Yeah. So tunnels led to that led to the inner temple. And um like I said, I'm not trying to get copyright infringement here. So here is an underground river. It, um it looks natural, so they probably found... It probably was a yeah. natural cave that they carved more... Like they carved out. Um, so, the 12 disciples would go back to the inner temple. that We're going to take a look at in a second. And they would cross this, which is symbolic of the, um, the undertaker bringing the souls over the river Styx to Hades. Like I said... These are some of the Towards biggest believers in God the because everything they do is anti-God. And here is an inner, real-life, pagan, ritualistic... Now, only 12 people would have been allowed to see the inside of this inner temple. Even during the times of the Hellfire Club. Benjamin Franklin may have been lucky enough to be inside this quote-unquote inner temple. Well, he has a cave named after him. They did their own little version of... Uh of a little ceremony. Yeah. There was a lot of sex going on in there. There was a lot of processioning and stuff and mm. carrying. They don't even. She, and, she's like telling you, yeah, there's sex. Smearing themselves. Smearing themselves. That was, uh, yeah, that's part of sex magic with Aleister Crowley rubbing. It, it's it's vilely disgusting. In fact, it's kind of early in the morning. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details about it. But basically, he believed that the more perverted and blasphemous acts he can engage in it brought him closer to his reptilian gods and i know honestly i don't even think that alistair crowley was a human I, it's starting to make a lot more sense that he probably himself was a reptilian to bring forth paganism in the 19th century which makes a lot of sense there was a huge pagan renaissance in the late 1800s and early 1900s and thanks to a recent subscriber of mine who donated some occult books to me I have some of those books that were written around that time. Well, reprints of them. Yeah. There was a huge occult renaissance. A lot of the occult books that I read online come from the late 1800s and early 1900s. Written by people like Madame Blavatsky, Aleister Crowley, other famous wizards and black magicians of the time. So... And remember, there's hundreds and hundreds of secret societies all around the planet. You only hear about the Masons. They're like the most mainstream. But in all honesty, the real movers and shakers on planet Earth are not Freemason. I don't know who told... Who's, who's been telling you that? And, and guess who will actually defend that and tell you themselves? It's actual regular everyday Freemason will tell you that. Um... The real movers and shakers are also members of the Order of the Garter, uh, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which is an, the Rosicru which is an inner circle of the Rosicrucians. And there are other secret societies that you could join, but you have to become a Master Mason first, and then you could join one of the side orders, like become a Shriner. Or maybe you don't want to be in the Bacchus parties with little kids, and you want to become a wizard. You can go to a more esoteric side order where you'll learn advanced sorcery skills rather than engaging in driving around in little cars trying to pick up kids in clown hats that's what shriners do uh, it's not even a joke every side order is known for a specific thing and it just happens that a lot of the men who become master masons um more of them like to become shriners so let's give you an idea because <laughs> all right like i said it's early in the morning that's not a <laughs> use your imagination for that. Remember, Shriners children Shriners run children's hospitals. You know who else spent a lot of time in children's hospitals in England? Jimmy Seville. 
He also engaged in necromancy. I know that for a fact. Um, <laughs> we ain't talking about Jimmy Seville. You ain't keeping your breakfast down for that one. All right, We're not even going to go there. I can't even talk about half the stuff he did. He, he makes Aleister Crowley look like a nun. And that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's, it's almost like some of these pagans try to see who, who can outdo the other one to be the most obscene, blasphemous. And, and you, you see that same trend going on in modern hip-hop and pop music. It's all shock value now. Like, who can be the most repulsive... Anti blasphemous, Luciferian, tranny, witch on stage. Yeah, whatever. We see that going on every day. So, look, yeah, look how they light it up at night. It's all red on the outside. So, go yeah, out. Going back to that. Um, go, go back to the inner sanctum. Yeah, the inner temple here is something I want to show you. So, this is the inside. You'll notice it's in the circle this formation. There would have been enough room to put a nine foot magic you circle. Can tell the thing. It would have fit 12 men, 13 actually, and that makes a covenant. And um, when the Vatican performs rituals, because I covered it, I showed the um, excommunication ritual from the Vatican, because it proves that they do practice paganism. Because how does the Pope and the bishops have the authority to condemn a human soul not to enter heaven and into hell? That's what excommunication is. And I showed the actual ritual. And the ritual for excommunication involves the Pope surrounded by his cardinals in a magic circle holding candles. And I showed, because that ritual is shown in the infamous TV show, The Borgias, which is a really good show. Yeah, they showed the excommunication ritual in that show. It's amazing what you can see in TV and movies, like Eyes Wide Shut. They put it right in front of your face. So anyway... You get the idea all around these, um, in the inside of the temple. Not all, the, the, the walls are carved everywhere. I'm going to pin this video as top comment. And uh, if you want to watch it. I want to try to figure out this mystery. What is up with, yeah, the ball? I'm really curious about that. What the hell? Why did they have a sphere that six men can fit inside? And why was it rumored that they met inside of it sometimes? What the hell were they doing? <laughs> That's strange. I don't know. Maybe it was like some ritual, like, I don't know, going into the bowels of hell or something. I have, Or being in a female womb and being reborn or something. Uh, it, it has to do... Something along those lines. And remember, these people at the end of the day, you know, you'll notice in the video, <laughs> I don't know why the guy doesn't talk about the, I don't know, maybe, uh, look, I could be wrong about the guy who made the video, maybe he doesn't want to talk about the children's cave because he doesn't know what the hell to say about it, like, uh, yeah, why is there a children's cave here? <laughs> What the hell? Um, yeah, and in the children's cave, is there a lot of red staining on the wall in that room? Is that the... Uh, hey, let's not... It's a, it's only a new word, because but back then, it would have been called ambrosia, which is a Greek word. So they wouldn't have said, hey, let's go to the children's cave and get some adrenochrome for our big uh, orgy ritual tonight. No, they would have... Um, they would have been calling it Ambrosia, the Greek word. But it's the same thing. They would have terrorized the children. Um, and also, like I said, for human sacrifices, sadly around this time, they would have used a lot of prostitutes. And they even admit in this video that women did enter these caves. For what reason? More than likely to be uh, sacrificed to the pagan gods. Because the, de the Roman definition of paganism in the Greek is you're either a militia Christo, which is a soldier of Christ, or you're a pagan who makes ritual sacrifices to the gods and goddesses. Ritual sacrifice. That's, so when I say pagan, 
That is what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about um someone who's, you know, like, I'm not trying to insult Wiccans. I have a friend who's a Wiccan. Um, believe it or not. No, um, so, but they understand, even he knows when, he, he knows what I mean when I say pagan. I'm not talking about, just because you're not Christian, no. I'm talking about real pagans. Yeah, engaging in Bacchus rituals and human and animal sacrifices to the gods and goddesses. And if you have a statue of Aphrodite in the inner temple, there are sacrifices being made to her. So yeah, 12 people would have went into that inner temple. 12 people on a human sacrifice. What they do, um, they'll tie the person down, usually. Um, a lot of times in a lot of modern rituals with Satanists, uh, a lot of times they will um, disable their victims with such drugs such as heroin. Yeah, so they're incapacitated and can't move, and it helps build up the adrenaline in their blood because the people are still alive and they'll be tortured, cut slowly. Then chalices will be passed around and they will all start drinking the blood of the victim, and that is very real. And that is what would have went on in this inner temple. And remember, that inner temple, when you're in there, you are deck you are Directly below the, um, this right here is directly below the altar of the church above it. So when they carved this cave, that was done intentionally. So in every Catholic cathedral you're ever in, good luck getting access to the basement. <laughs> oh, but there's a basement. And obviously, one of the most infamous lizards alive, well, used to be, until they finally admitted she died, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, yeah, is below a church right now in a quote-unquote royal vault. And you'll never see the royal vault being shown to the public. I wonder why. Gee, and I'm surprised they even showed this much of the Hellfire Club, because this is actually amazing. I've never, I mean, a lot of the stuff that's going on in here, it's only verifying what I've been putting out and teaching about the Archons, the Alien Greys, children. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin said, let us visit. Yeah, he visited the Hellfire Caves. So anyway, I need some more coffee. Yeah, the banqueting hall was lined with pagans, gods, and goddesses. Anyway, the, uh, I'll pin this as the top comment if you want to come by and actually watch the guy give you the tour of the Hellfire Club. Figured I'd give you some insight to this. And as usually, once I start talking about reptilians and archons and pagans, my videos tend to run a little, little longer, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> It's um, okay. So anyway, um, if you could support the channel, I would appreciate it. You want to throw me some money for some cigarettes? Um, I do possibly want to run a live stream tonight. My tooth is not bothering me right now for obvious reasons. I just talked for almost 45 minutes. So yeah, I should be able to run a live stream tonight. Shouldn't be a problem. Um, anyway. So if you can support the channel, I do not run ads on my videos. So if you can support the channel, anything helps. All the links are in the description. I'll pin this video, like I said, as a top comment if you want to come by. And actually, I'm going to sub to this channel. I'm just curious what else they make. I've heard of this YouTube channel before. I've seen other things they've done. Anyway, that was a... Uh, Insight into the Hellfire Caves and the Hellfire Club. Paganism right in plain sight. Confirming a lot of the other theories I have and other people. Such as the Greek god being these Zeta Reticulan alien greys. And we see their heads carved on the Hellfire Caves. Heads that look very much like alien greys. And of course the mystery of what was up with the children's cave. Was that a daycare center for pagans in the 1700s? Wow. 
Oh, yeah. Um, any questions or comments, leave them below. God bless and take care.